And welcome back to Hardball. Democratic Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida is a member of the Appropriations Committee. And Republican Congressman Dan Burton of Indiana is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and led congressional hearings on President Clinton's pardons and commutations. Um, Congressman Burton, I want to start with you. You just heard... Um, Fuad Ajami compares Scooter Libby to our soldiers in Iraq, and we heard from Paul Reichaft, who actually served in Iraq, who said, no way. Do you consider Scooter Libby a soldier in the war in Iraq? I'm not going to get into that argument that you just completed. What I'm going to say is this. Uh, selective uh, judgment and criticism is something I think is terrible. Bill Clinton pardoned terrorists. He pardoned uh, uh, people who broke the law. He himself committed perjury and was never disbarred. He had a temporary suspension, but that was it. He never went to jail. He committed perjury, told the American people lies. Uh, Congressman Burke, let's get this straight. You supported Bill Clinton's impeachment for perjury and obstruction of justice, right? Yes, yes, I did. But now you support the commutation for Scooter Libby for perjury and obstruction of justice. Uh, I think that Scooter Libby, uh, uh, being uh, in the position that he was in, made a big mistake. But you don't uh, think he should spend a single day in jail for that mistake, even though you were willing to impeach a president who was elected twice? Was Bill Clinton, did he serve any time? Did Bill Clinton get any penalty at all? Did, was he disbarred? Yeah, history judged him pretty harshly, but the point is... Well, so it's going it's it's to judge, it's, it's gonna judge Scooter Libby as well. But, you know, don't be selective in your judgment. You know, I know you're a strong Democrat and a liberal, but be, <laughs> but be fair. You should have seen my coverage but of be Bill fair. Clinton during the pardon. I was covering your hearing, Congressman, for the, f the fact of the matter is... But let's Let's get back to this point. The point is that you believe that when it's perjury and obstruction of justice involving somebody who probably has information about the vice president, that information that's no longer going to get out, it's fine for him not to spend a single day in jail, but it's fine when a Democrat commits perjury and obstruction of justice for them to be impeached, right? Did Bill Clinton go to jail? I don't remember that. Did Bill you Clinton tried to impeach was he... him? You tried well, but to he was him. but he was not convicted in the, of the impeachment. He didn't go to jail. He was prosecuted, uh, going to be prosecuted for perjury and lose his license to practice law. And you never said a thing about that. And Actually, I did. As a matter of fact, I covered every one of your hearings when I was working in my oh. former job. But let's go to Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Um, you believe that President Clinton should not have been impeached? Is that correct? Well, I was in the Florida House of Representatives when uh, the, that impeachment was prosecuted. So, you know, at, at the time, no, I didn't think that President Clinton should be impeached. But I think the important thing to note uh, that my colleague is conveniently leaving out is that President Clinton, unlike Mr. Libby, was not convicted. He was prosecuted by the House. He was impeached. He was not convicted by the Senate. Unlike Mr. Libby, who was prosecuted and convicted by a jury of his peers, had a judge hand down the sentence, and then had the President of the United States swoop in and rescue him from that sentence in contradiction to his own Department of Justice's advocacy just two weeks ago for a similar sentence of 33 months for the same crime that a government uh, official was convicted of. Victor, uh, Victor Rita was convicted of obstruction of justice and lying to prosecutors, and he got 33 months in jail. The Department of, of, of Justice uh, supported vehemently that, that conviction and that sentence in front of the Supreme Court, and instead, the president, but the president, for Scooter Libby, a different standard for the same crime, that there is apparently no amount of time in jail that's appropriate. It, this is a, 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 an example of hypocrisy of immeasurable proportions. It, it's been, obvious that this administration has that? no shame, yeah, no my, shame my, at all. And they continue my, to demonstrate how they have no shame. My response is that Bill Clinton lied to a grand jury twice. You he know, committed, he, he, let me, he, okay, you desperately ahead. want to make this about Bill Clinton, and this is about President Bush and the fact that his administration has spent the last six and a half, half years operating as if the law does not apply to them. And unlike the, Mitchell, let him go with this whole idea about lying to the grand jury, because I'm intrigued with where he's going. You know going what, you're right. Ahead, I'm going to sit go back ahead. and let him cook his own goose. <laughs> Bill Clinton committed perjury twice. Uh, he was going to be indicted and he was going to be prosecuted, but because of his position... Woulda, shoulda, coulda. And he's, he, he spent $25,000. He had lost his license to practice, med, uh, practice law for about uh, six or seven months. And then he got it all back. He didn't go to jail for perjury. He didn't well, go to jail for lying. Congressman Burton, you would have preferred if President Clinton had been prosecuted. So here's the question. Uh -huh. how, how much time should somebody spend in jail if they are convicted of perjury and obstruction of justice? Should they spend one day? Should they spend three weeks? Should they spend three months? 
I think the same rule of law should be applied to everybody, including President Bill Clinton, and it was not. And he also pardoned. Really? Well, the Listen, Senate didn't. Let me remind you, the Senate didn't convict him. So the same but, rule of law applied that was, to him. I feel quite. That was a different situation. What would have exactly? It was a different situation that you are trying to compare to this situation. That's the only argument you've made for the last two or three minutes. It is not comparable. The president, uh, President Clinton, was not convicted by the Senate. And what would have happened to him if he was? He would have been removed from office, That's appealable right. to no one. That's appealable right. Appealable to no one. In yeah. this case, Scooter Levy was convicted. But the perjury and was who a did, different. Who, who the, rescued the, him? The President of the United the, States. The perjury they, is they a, was both accused you, of perjury, well, both you accused to of obstruction of justice. Feel free to go ahead. The perjury charge was entirely different from the impeachment, and you know that. He was charged with perjury for lying to a grand jury, not once but twice, and to the American people. He looked right in the camera and says, I want to tell you something. And you, the American people know that. Now, let me just say one more thing, and then you can say what you want to. He pardoned terrorists. The Puerto Rican terrorist. He pardoned people who are drug dealers. He pardoned Mark Rich, who was the number two wanted by the FBI, and and who they tried to get for years, and he never even was was even allowed to go to trial. Clinton pardoned him. He he, he tried to pardon other people that his brother and his and his wife was but trying Congress to get pardoned. Burton, given that Mark Rich's attorney was Scooter Libby, I'm even more surprised that you would support a commutation of Scooter Libby. Furthermore, I think that there's going to be a lot <laughs> exactly. of people sit in prison today in Florida and in Central Indiana who also want pardons and commutations, so we're going to be wondering, why not me? But in any case, Congressman Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Congressman Dan Burden are staying with us. Up next, we will talk.